you say, well, I did this, I did that, and how's it going to turn out this way, how's it going to turn out that way. He binds up the wounds, and God knows how to do it, my friend. He knows how to bind up your wounds better than you do. You don't walk at your pace. You don't walk at your... It, it don't happen at your behest. It doesn't happen in your way. But believe you me, God will bind up your wounds, but he does it in his time, in his way. And if you come to him and repent and turn to him, he's going to bind up your wounds. He's going to bring a healing to your heart. He's going to bring... He's going to bring a peace and a strength and a hope and a joy. And a, he's going to do it. It might take time, but he'll do it. He's going to bind up your wounds. God has his timing. And he's going to do it. And he will do it in your life. Matthew chapter 9, 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. Go ye and learn what meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Christ says, I, I, I want mercy. I want to give mercy. And he, and he wants to give you mercy today. God don't want to pulverize you to the ground. He wants to lift your head up and he wants you to have mercy today. Thomas Watson, a Puritan, says repentance is a grace of God's Spirit. Just uh Repentance is a grace of God's Spirit where a sinner is inwardly humbled and visibly reformed. Thomas Watson, a Puritan. <coughs> Philip Yancey. Jesus reserves his hardest words for the hidden sins of hypocrisy, greed, and legalism. <coughs> Excuse me. Leonard Ravenhill. The world has lost the power to blush over its vice. The church has lost the power to weep over it. Johann Ardent. Johann Ardent. Heart suffering because of sin is the best proof the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. John Stott says sin and the child of God are incompatible. They may occasionally meet. They cannot live together in harmony. John Munkey, You will never be able to speak against sin if you're if you're entertained by it. We have to repent. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out where the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. As we repent, there will be times of refreshing in our life. Chip Brogan says, It is not that we need more power, but that we need more brokenness. When we are properly broken, we, we will find the indwelling Christ is more than sufficient. A little aside, you who uh, are pastors of big mega churches, what you need most of all in your church is not more money. It is not a bigger worship band. What you need is repentance. Psalm 51 verse 17. Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. 
So we've looked that we're at sinners. That goes without saying. If you argue against that, you don't understand the Christian faith. Secondly, we've looked at the need to repent. That if we turn and confess, God is ready to meet us in forgiveness. If we're broken about our sin, he will come and bind up our wounds. And then God is ready to forgive. Let's turn to Psalm 51, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 9, Hide thy face from my sins, and what? Blot out my iniquities. God will blot out your sin and forgive you. Hebrews chapter 9, 22. You see, all your sin, whatever that sin is, instead of you being punished for that sin, Jesus Christ was punished in your place. Hebrews 9, 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. It's the blood of Christ that cleanses you. It's the blood of Christ that forgives you. For in the blood of Christ it was shed for you at the cross. Revelation 1.5 From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince and the kings, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He washed us from our sins in his own blood. Hebrews 9.14 Hebrews 9.14 Hebrews 9.14 How much more shall the blood of Christ who brought the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. <coughs> Excuse me. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. One Peter chapter 1, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. It is a precious blood because it was the Savior's blood where he died on that cross on your behalf. God was going to judge you on judgment day and send you to hell because you sinned and you couldn't pay your debt back. So what God did is came down in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was perfect, holy and divine and human. And there it was prophesied that he would die in your place. And as they whipped him, as they put a crown of thorns on his head and as they nailed him, it should have been you and me being nailed to go to hell. But he died in your place that you might be living and saved today. Count Sissendorf says, Our method of proclaiming salvation is this, to point out to every heart the loving Lamb who died for us, and although he was the Son of God, offered himself for our sins,